how can you get him or her to go camping with you, whether it's for a weekend or for full-time RV travel? I've got some helpful tips for you next. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and these are exciting times to push past fear, build confidence and live amazing. And you'll definitely live amazing if only you can get him or her to go camping with you. And Paul and I are full-time RVers. We meet people that are out here for a weekend or trying to get out here full-time. And there's just that stumbling block of getting your partner to get on board with you to come out and enjoy camping life. So you might want to grab a pen and paper and take notes. But first of all, where is Paul? Paul is usually here and I promise we will see him at least least once a week and I think he will show up later in this video and tell you where he is. So I'd like to give you some tips particularly if your significant other is on the fence. I do want to have a disclaimer first and say that not every person can be convinced to do camping life, RV life, and in fact it's not for everybody. You know your partner although I'm primarily going to say wife, this applies to boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife, partner, spouse, whatever. But like I said, I'm not gonna be able to perform miracles here. I can relate if your partner is saying, I don't wanna camp, camping's not for me. When I grew up, we did absolutely no camping. In fact, the first time I went camping, I was 25. I was raised in a British family. My mother was very proper. I don't think she's ever drunk out of a paper cup. We would go on picnics and we would have china plates out of the picnic basket. So when my boyfriend, when I was 25, when my boyfriend said he wants to take me camping, I'm thinking cabin. I truly thought we were gonna stay in a cabin. So the next thing you know, I'm in the woods with him and he's rolling out a sleeping bag. And I said, well, where's the bathroom? He says, behind that tree. Let me tell you, I came back and I told him I couldn't find it. I mean, I actually packed a blow dryer. I mean, I just had no idea. So tip number one is meet your partner where they are. Meet your wife where she is. If she's never done any camping, introduce it to her in a gentle way. I think for me, it would have been great if we actually had stayed in a cabin and then kind of got used to the idea of camping. We have neighbors here right now, they're in their 20s, and when he told his girlfriend that he wanted to get a camper, she was like, oh my gosh, that sounds horrible, because she had no point of reference, or maybe the camper she had seen was something that was trashy, and it was just not anything appealing to her. So he took her to an RV show, and she was like, oh wow, they're actually pretty nice. So that might be a way to do it, is just take your wife to an RV dealer and let her look at some campers so she can see that it's really not so bad. The next tip is to really listen to your wife. A couple years after my first camping incident, my husband at the time and I had a truck camper. So it's one of those campers that slides into the bed of the truck. It did not have a bathroom, but it had electricity. We had a real bed and I was happy until we went camping in April in Kentucky and we're at a campground and it's pouring rain. Now, if you know Kentucky spring rains, I mean, it's a serious cold rain downpour. And at three in the morning, this rain is happening and I have to pee. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the bathhouse is like a three or four minute walk up a hill. If I go up there, I'm going to be freezing. I'm gonna be soaking wet. I'm gonna be not happy, not in a good mood. So I told my husband on the way home, I said, if you want me to keep camping with you, we need to find a camper with a bathroom. Before we got home, we purchased a class C camper. So it definitely pays to listen to what she has to say and try and figure out you know, what the stumbling block is. And I think for most women, having a bathroom in the rig is huge. So many times people dig their heels in because you know, they don't feel respected when they say no. So if you really respect her and listen to her objectives, you may be able to overcome them. 
whether you're going for weekends or going for full time, you know, what could bring your wife out there? What could sweeten the deal, right? I've met several women that love to quilt and they love to sew and the husbands have set up a place in the camper for them to do their hobby, whether it's knitting, crocheting, anything like that, make room for it so she can take it with her. If you've got your wife coming out camping with you on weekends and now you want to go longer term think about things that she likes to do maybe she likes to bird watch go hiking is there a certain band that she likes she could follow this musical group across the country and, and watch them perform in various cities and that is another really cool thing about RV life is you, you can do that Paul would love to follow the NHRA, which is, uh, I don't even know what it stands for, but it's drag car racing. And he would, he would love to just follow that circuit on the road. So if your wife has an interest like that, that's just perfectly suited for RV life and really is the magic of this life. And of course, family's a big incentive. If your adult kids, grandkids are scattered, what a great way to plan trips where you can be with them or you can say, we're going to the Grand Canyon and fly everybody in and have a big family time. If your grandkids are getting older, you can introduce camping to them and have them come with you on some trips. All right, so here are some general arguments about why I think RV life is better than living in a house. Number one, even though that I had a maid for the last 10 years I lived in a house, I still spent hours and hours each week cleaning because after all, the maid couldn't be there every day. And if you've ever had a cleaning person, you know that before they come, you do a pre-clean, right? I can clean my entire camper in less than 30 minutes. I'm talking like a deep clean even. It is amazing the hours I save just not having to clean. Another huge saver is yard work. Hey, we're out here in the woods, there's no yard work. Think about the time spent cleaning out gutters, mowing the lawn, raking the lawn, mulching, weeding. All that time adds up to hours every week. You are free from that. So it's a huge, huge game changer. And actually what RV life does is it frees up your time to go to national parks and to explore and see and do and really live life more. Instead of spending your time toiling and maintaining and cleaning a house, you're out living and having experiences and seeing and doing. Even if it's just something simple as playing bingo, you're you're relaxing and having fun and meeting people. Another biggie for a lot of people is think about traveling and never having to use a public restroom again. That's a great advantage of RV life, whether you have a towable or a class A, that's huge. Also think about never having to sleep in a hotel bed ever again, because you take your bed with you. Well, look at what Liz is missing. So this is the Vietnam room. This brings back a flood of memories. Uh, starting with the truck right here is, we called them hard trucks in the uh, company that I was in, the 670th Transportation Company in Vietnam. I helped build these things. Well, Paul and I meet a lot of couples out here on the road, and typically what it is, is one person was driving the bus to come and saying, you know, come on, let's get out here, let's go camping, let's do this life. And the other one was like, hmm, I'm not so sure it's for me. But then we often hear, now that I'm out here, I so love this life. So that's the happy outcome we hope for you. And let us know your tips for convincing your partner to come out here and go camping. We'll see you in the next video.